here we are back again, week 11 waiver wire. Yes, indeed. Another crazy one. Yeah, to Fan- say the this least. This may be the most unpredictable fantasy football season ever. Yeah. Uh, man, it's been rough. It's never ending. Yeah. Studs or duds? <laughs> duds or studs? Right. I mean, you think you have a handle on something. Mm. You think you have a little bit of an inside track. And you don't. No. You don't. But, I mean, it, you Just, know, that's what makes it fun, right? It's like a guessing game. It's like gambling. I guess yeah. It is kind of gambling. It's better when you win, though. <laughs> yeah, it's always better when you win. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Next episode of Fantasy Headliners coming at you week 11 waiver wire. There's a few names. Mm, yeah. I mean, we tried to go outside the norm. Right. Because I think we've said the same names over and over and over again. And <laughs> we're just trying to switch it up a little bit. Get uh, get some new perspective. Mm. So I'm a, I'm gonna let you start off. Okay. Uh, give me your waiver wires. We do have a few bye weeks. We got the Colts, the Jets, the Niners, and the Panthers. Yeah. You know, not a whole lot of world beaters out there on those teams, but you know, no Jack Mother- Doyle, Doyle this week. <laughs> right. I mean, you got no ASJ. No Cam. No Cam. I mean, everybody. I'm sure started CJ Beathard this week. Right. Yeah. So I mean, you know, <laughs> he's he's not there, but you know, there's there's a few. Few people that we could have to, to fill in. Yeah. And plus you get a lot of guys back. Yeah. Exactly. Travis Kelsey owners are happy he's back. I Especially I against the Giants, because every tight end scores against the Giants. Yeah, everybody. So but why don't you go ahead and get us started with the, uh, your first waiver wire ad? Okay. Um well, you know, with the whole situation that went on the previous week, you know, with, with Zeke and everything. Um Who? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the, it's been a ongoing carousel, I guess you'd say. But um, Rod Smith is intriguing to me, and what I would do, I would implore people just to, if you got availability on your bench, pick him up. I'm not sold on Alfred Morris at all. Um, it's kind of you got to pick and choose, but to me, Rod Smith has the most potential to be a workhorse, um, and he actually played more snaps. He played 39 snaps compared to you know, Alfred's 21. And I know the game flow was kind of, you know, contributing, you know, that factor as well because Rod Smith is actually a better pass catching uh, back. But I don't know, man. It's just I've, I've uh, looked at a little film on him, especially in the preseason. He looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. He's a big old boy too, man. Yeah, he is. He, he's, a, he's a big guy. Yeah, man. he is. And I think, like you said, I think the game flow kind of turned that into yeah. more Rod Smith. I can't. See this week you picking up Rod Smith and starting Rod Smith. No, don't pick him up and think you're like, whew, yeah, I got him. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. play him. Yeah, no, just hold him. Yeah, yeah, because none of these guys are right now. I mean, I think that left tackle, you know, mm. Tyron Smith and, and Dallas being out that hurts. Yeah, it does. I mean, you can kind of see last night that you know Dak was running for his life a lot. <laughs> he was taking a lot of hits, and yeah, running backs had no lanes, and I mean that. Dallas Cowboy offensive line is not 100%. No. And this is exactly what you, what you get. You know, more teams are just keying yeah. in on it and taking it away. Right. And especially with a hobbled Dez, you know. It's, yeah. I mean, they started off the game hot. I think like the first two yeah. or three passes went to Dez. And I was like, I thought this guy's ankle was like yeah. in pieces. But apparently <laughs> not. And then that was about it. Yeah. <laughs> went away easily. I'm going to go with uh, another running back that comes back this week off of injury. We told everybody to pick him up last week. Hmm. I don't know if everybody listened. He's up to 37% owned, so some people listened. Yep. Danny Woodhead comes back this week. Hmm. Uh, Danny Woodhead is not going to come and set your fantasy lineup on fire. No. He's going to take that role back from Buck Allen. I'm pretty sure he steps right back into that role, that yep. pass-catching back role. Is he going to come out and get you 10 receptions? Probably not. But they're going to work him back in, and if nothing else, pick him up, stash him if you can, because... Yep. With all these injuries that we got, yeah. you never know. I mean, Danny Woodhead may be the anchor of your running back stable here by week 13. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know. Yeah. You just have no idea. So, Danny Woodhead, like I said, only 37% owned. He is going against Green Bay this week. And apparently, everybody in Green Bay is hurt. Man. I mean, Aaron Jones, <laughs> Ty Montgomery, Brett Hundley's banged up. Yeah. I mean, they're asking Aaron Rodgers if he can play with a plate in his arm. I mean, it's just it's ugly. It's pretty bad. Man. I mean, Devontae Adams had a decent game for Green Bay, but mm. other than that, that whole offense is just mm. – it's its sad. Yeah, I mean – It's a lot of star power just wasted sitting away. there. And it's its amazing to, to see how one player can affect 
a whole team. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of reminiscent to even Michael Jordan, you know, in his heyday when he went out. I mean, the Bulls sucked <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Yeah, to put it bluntly, yeah, they, were exactly. not, they were not good. At all. And then they came back, and then they were good again. Yeah. And that's probably what happened. Do you think, you think if Kobe came back to the Lakers right now, they'd be good? Kobe, yes. <laughs> liar. <laughs> liar. <laughs> Being number one Laker fan right, here. Right, right, yeah. Um, I like, oh, man, and I, I don't even believe I'm saying this, but Latavius Murray. I don't like that you're saying it either. Yeah. But you kind of got to. You got to. I mean, week 11, it, it's not a lot to choose from. But you got to look at the matchup coming this week. You know, the Rams give up uh, the third most fancy points to RBs. Um, you know, and he had uh, 68 yards in a TD this past week. And they keep giving him the ball. Yeah, I mean. I don't know why. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything points to them going McKinnon, McKinnon, McKinnon. Well, yeah. And not so much just for the running, but just getting McKinnon involved. And this week, McKinnon was not. No. I don't think McKinnon touched the ball in the first quarter. It's weird. It's weird. I mean, I mean, I can understand if Murray was consistently productive, but it's kind of like they're trading off. Yeah, yeah I don't get this it. This is kind of like the beginning of the year Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill issue where every other game one of them is doing good. <laughs> yeah. So if you pick up Murray this week, that means McKinnon's going to go off. That's possible. You never know. That's possible. Uh, I'm going to go and break a fantasy sin, Mm-mm. and I'm going to pick a running back of the New England Patriots. Yeah. Another <laughs> one of these guys that – it's hard to trust him, but if he's out there, he's kind of too good to just not be owned. Yeah. You kind of got to have him. You may not want to start him, but Rex Burkhead, he's yeah. only 11% owned. <clears throat> They're going up against Oakland, which is horrendous against the running backs. Yeah. I mean, he had 10 carries for 36 yards, three catches for 27, and a touchdown. That's kind of what I think you're going to get out of him. Mm-hmm. Right around 10 fantasy points a day or a week. He's never going to have the – well, I can't say never. <laughs> you, hey, never right. you never know a Bill Belichick. But, exactly. You know, he could have a huge game. But I think he's right around that that flex territory where if you're in a pinch or you just have no other options, yeah, you know, throw him at your flex and cross your fingers because you never know. Well, I, and if I'm not mistaken, this is the same time last year when he, he started going mm-hmm. off, you know. For the Bengals. For the Bengals, exactly. So, um. I kind of like Dontrell Inman this week. How much do you like him? Uh, just a little bit? Just a, just a little bit. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. That just happened. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to see if you're paying attention. Yeah. You keep you on your toes. Uh, you know, At least I didn't say to wiggle it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't do that. Yeah. That'd be weird. Yeah, I'm going to see how long I can keep this going to get you <laughs> off your game. <laughs> yeah. That, woo. Yeah. It's close. That's right. <laughs> um. I mean, I, I like him enough to possibly even play him in a couple of uh, FanDuel lineups this week. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, Trubisky is starting to, you know, turn it on a little bit. He's throwing more than eight times a game. Exactly. And Emin is becoming to be his favorite target, actually. I have no clue what the deal is with Cohen. He, clearly, he's the best athlete they have on their roster. But they have no interest in using him. At all. So, and I contribute that to, to Fox. I mean. He hates fantasy people. He does. Him Maybe. and Marvin Lewis and Chuck Pagano. Pagano, yeah. All those guys are like Belichick. fantasy. Yeah, they're all fantasy haters. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, but, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, him and is is proven to be consistent, you know, the past few weeks, you know. Um, he only had about 88 yards yesterday. But, again, I mean, he's a consistent guy. I mean, Trubisky. He's going to continue to look his way. Um, hopefully, Howard can continue to you know get the carries and open up those uh, passing lanes. And yeah, Emmons a pretty good play this week. Yeah, I mean, if you have to, yeah, definitely I mean, FanDuel type oh, DFS yeah. lineups. Yeah. I mean, deep leagues. Yeah, but I mean, heck, you never know. He's obviously one of the guys' number one targets. So yeah, it's. I'm going to uh, stick with the running back position. All right, because I got a lot of running backs on my list. <laughs> Uh, I'm going with a preseason hype guy. Right. Everybody was excited about Samal J.P. Ryan. Yeah. He came out, and I think he ran backwards more than forwards. <laughs> uh, did not do anything <laughs> real well. Uh, but the injuries to Rob Kelly just keep happening and happening. And he's getting, you know, chances time and time again. Yeah. Chris Thompson's still going to be the lead guy there, but he's not going to get 20 carries a game. 
that's not Chris Thompson's type of type of style. He's gonna you know get you the seven to ten receptions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know he'll ten carries a game maybe. P Ryan's gonna end up getting work. He's gonna get you fifteen carries a game. He may not go very far with those fifteen <laughs> carries, yeah. but he is. I mean he had nine carries for thirty five, one catch for twenty five uh, this past week. But they're going against New Orleans, and all of a sudden New Orleans is. World beaters. <laughs> all, all of a sudden, they are a top tier defense. Whew, yeah, I mean that that team overall, offense and defense, is just. Man. I mean, if you would have told me that you know Drew Brees was, you know, handing the ball off more than he was throwing it, I would have said, "You're a dang liar." Yeah, <laughs> you lied to my face. <laughs> Give me some of that that you're drinking. Yeah, but uh, it is. I mean, they've totally turned it into a, a run heavy type offense, and they throw it when they need to, and they run it every other time. Yeah, you know, so great, great. Overall team there in New Orleans, and the the Redskins are going to have to do whatever they can to stay in the game. Yeah, and I I think New Orleans pass defense is a little bit better than their run defense. P Ryan's going to get the goal line work. He's worth a shot, right? He's not your your RB one. No, no, he's like your RB thirteen. But at this rate, that means they're all rosterable. Yes, <laughs> and I hate that because I you know I kind of like you know R, R-, R- Kelly. But um, should I start singing? I, I'm don't. I can okay, it, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's stick with the red skin theme. Uh-oh. And my last uh, waiver wire gem. I like Jameson Crowder. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing: what I'm looking at is the volume is increasing. You know, he had 13 targets last week, and then 11 on Sunday. Uh, you know, so it, it's it's um, a it's a trend, you know, he, he's, he's staying double digit wise. And then you got to look at it. Kurt is running out of options. No Jordan Reed. Pryor seemed like he's lost. He, he got his money. <laughs> Basically. I mean, what? and I hate to say that because, I mean, he's a great talent, you know, um, very disappointing. I was looking. They were actually talking about trading him. Nobody probably wanted mind. him. Well, uh, the last that I heard, it was um, – a possible trade between um, the Redskins and Cleveland for some odd reason. I don't know why, but go back to Cleveland. Yeah, the <laughs> the wants? reuniting. Hey, hey, can you imagine it, Terrell Pryor and Josh Gordon along with Corey Coleman? That's, that's, that's intriguing. Then all of a sudden you got Drew Kaiser throwing the ball, and it's not so intriguing, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Kaiser's ruins it all. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, speaking of Corey Coleman, that's somebody else who's coming back from injury this week. Yeah, yes, I mean, that's somebody yes, to keep yeah. an eye on. If he was dropped in your league, keep an eye on Corey Coleman. I mean, I think he's only like seventeen percent owned. Mm-hmm. They are going against Jacksonville this week, so if you do have him, I'm not going to recommend you start him. But, no, <laughs> but he's definitely worth it. Got a, you know a good couple game stretch coming up after that. Yeah, Corey Coleman is an elite receiver. He just can't oh, stay yeah. healthy. Right. If he could stay healthy, he'd be great, especially with a better quarterback. Yeah, and he could he could turn it in. I mean, turn it on there the, the second half of the year may mm. show a few flashes. Yeah, like I think was it two years ago? Uh, what with him and McCown? No, I think it was last year. Was it last year? Yeah, it was Whatever last it was, year. he had a few games where he kind of flashed and then he broke his hand. Yep. I mean, yep. he's he's capable of big games. Yes, he's a, a possession style receiver that has the speed to bust one big. Yeah, and <laughs> heck, especially if he can stay healthy with Josh Gordon coming back here oh, in a few man. weeks, he all that attention is going to Josh. Did you see yeah. Josh ran like a four four forty in Man, practice the other day? I cannot wait. Four man. three or four four, something like that. It was it was fast. Yeah. That is, I'm telling you, my soapbox is ready. Yeah. I've been preaching Josh Gordon all year. So <laughs> Well, for your sake, I hope that it works out. <laughs> exactly. For reality's sake, I'm still kind of saying, I don't know. Yeah. Well yeah, just because his feet are fast doesn't mean his hands are ready. Yeah. True. You true. know what I mean? But uh, hey. The dude looking like a, a you know a, a god over there on the side. I mean, the dang physique is ridiculous. He's right. obviously in physically you know good shape, but yeah. But how's the how's the head? That's what I'm worried about. I, th- I think it'd be all right. We're gonna find out pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Here's the deal though: because you have him, yes, I'm going to make you start him the first week he's eligible. I will start him regardless. I'm telling you. <laughs> Even I've been if he's three up, years, <laughs> you will start him. Yes. Uh, last guy that I got here is another receiver. Uh, deeper league with the injury to Will Fuller, mm. not knowing how much time he's going to miss. Yeah, Bruce Ellington, maybe mm. he had eight targets this yeah. past game. I mean, not a whole lot of receivers out there that are getting that kind of targets. I know they're coming from Savage, so mm-hmm. even though he's only getting eight of them, I'm sure only three or four of them are catchable. <laughs> but he's catching the ones he can. Four catches for 41 yards and a touchdown. 
Mm. Uh, he has that breakaway type speed. Uh, maybe he's going to kind of fill in for that underneath stuff because they were just forcing the ball to Hopkins yesterday and they couldn't get it in there. Yeah, exactly. Ellington may be the guy that kind of eats it up down below. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he's worth a he's worth a roster spot. If nothing else, I mean, don't start him. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're a Will Fuller owner, yeah. maybe this is somebody you can kind of just swap. Yeah, depending maybe. on how much you know, how long Fuller is out. Yeah, but that's going to get us into a. A next segment where I kind of want to get your opinion on a couple things. Mm-hmm. Putting you on the spot. Hey, I'm ready. I'm going to hide my sheet here so you can't see it. All right. I want to know. I'm going to say some names. I want you to tell me. Okay. Keep them. Mm-hmm. Trade them. Yes. And you better trade fast because most deadlines are coming up. Indeed. Ours is this week. So I I'm sure some, some people have already passed. I got some packages ready. I bet you do. <laughs> I'm waiting for my phone to go off. All right. Uh, or cut them. If they're not even going to worth, if they're not worth the roster spot. Yep. You can just cut bait. Keep trade cut. Yes. Got you ready? It. Yes. First one's going to be near and dear to your heart. Uh-oh. AP, Adrian Peterson. Oh, I'm keeping him. Why? Okay, here's the thing. And, and I'm not being impartial. <laughs> or I am being impartial. Excuse me. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. Right. Well, here's the thing. They're going to con- uh, continue to feed him the ball. I mean, it's just – it is what it is. You know, last week, it was one of those situations, I mean, it was eight in the box. Uh, Isn't there going to be eight in the box every week? Not every week. Not this week coming up, which it kind of leaks into our other segment because I mm-hmm. got a surprise for everybody. Under our start sits? Yes. Yes. But so I won't say too much, you know, to give that away. But here's the thing. Once these, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, when the passing lanes um, start to flourish and, and they open up, then AP is going to do his thing. I mean, he's in top physical shape, man. I mean, Here's the thing. If he was running behind the Steelers offensive line, Dallas, KC, we wouldn't even be having these, you know, these mm-hmm. conversations. Um, but I think the main thing is the reason why we're keeping is the volume is going to continue to be there. Um, and it showed this past week, you know, mm-hmm. they, they were going against a tough uh, Seattle defense and he, he kept. And running. we told a lot of people to start him this week. And yeah. It's one of those things where if you decide to keep him, mm-hmm. you kind of have to start him. Yeah, you got to, yeah. Because he is. There's not too many running backs that are going to get 20 to 30 carries a game. Mm-mm, no. His likelihood of either breaking one or getting in the end zone are pretty high. Didn't yeah. happen this week, but that's kind of the chance you got to take with somebody getting that many carries. It's kind of like going on a uh, blind date and you get there. Might not be what you expect. And you're a catfished. Got to go through it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? Depends. <laughs> there's a limit. Yeah, there's a limit. All right, what about Doug Martin? Cut. Cut that bad man pajama. <laughs> quickly. I mean, I don't know what happened there and uh, why it happened so quickly. Mm. I mean, I can't imagine the one-game suspension from Evans and a banged-up Janice Winston who's been banged up all year. Right, right. All of a sudden turned them into, you know, a top-five <laughs> drafting you know, NFL team, that team was, Man. they had Super Bowl expectations preseason. Yeah. And I'm not even sure they could beat the local varsity team. Probably not. Probably not. Some big boys on that team. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, I just don't get it. Doug Martin, as a yeah. Doug Martin owner. Right. I traded for Doug Martin. Mm-hmm. And I should not say that publicly. <laughs> but, I mean, at the time, mm-hmm. it seemed like, hey, I was good him. He, he had a great schedule coming up. Yeah. He hadn't fallen off the face of the earth like he has the past two yeah. weeks. I mean, five points over two weeks, that's enough just to make you – I mean, you could try to trade him, but nobody – maybe if there's a guy who has no idea what's going on in your league, you can try to trade him. Yeah. And just sell him on old clips. <laughs> Otherwise, just cut him. That's a good idea. What about Jordy? Uh, I would say trade, but, again, it kind of goes with what you were just saying. I mean, if if it's somebody that's knowledgeable, they may not – They're not going to want him. They're not going to want him anyway. Then again, it, you know, just name value alone, I don't know. But I would try to trade him before. I just can't see cutting Jordy Nelson. It just doesn't it doesn't go together. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It, it feels weird. It does. It feels dirty. Yeah. Like I feel uncleansed when I, when I you know, comes to doing that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I kind of feel like I've never played fantasy football when you actually click the button mm. that says, are you sure you want to drop Jordy Nelson? And you think to yourself, am I sure? Right. Because I'm not quite so sure. Well, yeah, that's kind of like uh, maybe in another week or so if David didn't come back, and I might have to. You're going to have to cut him. David Johnson is not on my list. Right. But if you have David Johnson, mm-hmm. cut him. I don't know, man. Just cut him. Woo. They're not going to bring him back. They're not going to go anywhere this year. Yeah. The team's not making the playoffs, especially yeah. if Drew Stanton is hurt. 
Exactly. I mean, I doubt Blaine Gabbert's going to take him on a Super Bowl run here. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, hey, you know, it, it is. It's it's horrible with Jordy Nelson. Yeah. I think you kind of got to cut him. Wow. Don't just cut him for nobody. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? If there's somebody out there, you know, worth rostering, mm-hmm. then yeah. yes. Don't just cut him to pick up, you know, Kenny Galladay because he had two catches. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Get him for something. Otherwise, just leave him sitting on your bench. Yeah. But if there's somebody out there, it hurts and it's painful, but Ooh, man, it's but tough. do it. I apologize to all the Doug Martin and Jordy Nelson owners this year. Yeah. I traded for both of them this year. <laughs> <laughs> Jordy worked out for the beginning of the season. Yeah. Not so much the second half. Hey, you could have traded for Aaron Jones this week. Yeah, I, I, you know, I kind of did. I traded him away. <laughs> Who did you trade him to, Jake? <laughs> Say, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, last one on the list, we kind of mentioned him earlier, Will Fuller. Yeah. He was the darling of the midseason, uh, yeah. coming out on pace for like 300 touchdowns after a few weeks. Uh, with his injury, we don't know the extent of it, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's a cut also. Yeah, yeah, you got to cut him. I mean, cut him. Savage isn't going to look for him. No, Savage just wings it. <laughs> Savage doesn't even like look at notes or nothing. He just goes out there and blindly throws the ball to DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> yeah, they should take a uh, page from the New Orleans Saints and play Donta and Murray. Mm-hmm. You know, it was kind of weird, something to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. Donta Foreman started the game this week. Mm. I I attributed it to that Lamar Miller just had to go to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, or something because yeah. something was going on. But <laughs> wanted I mean, a hot dog. Yeah, I mean, he's just you know he's a little hungry, want a snack. <laughs> but Foreman started. I mean, he only got like two carries, and then Miller was right back to what he does, which right. is you know straight line. He ain't he's not going to get you nothing flashy too often. But yeah, I don't know. Will Fuller pass. Yeah, he's done. He's done. Unfortunately, that's sad because he was a bright spot. He won a lot of people a lot of weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. but but not no more. Maybe next year. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> All right, guys. That was our uh, our waiver wires, our cheap 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 trappers. Bring it, bring it, bring it back. <laughs> Keep trade cuts and waiver yeah. wires. Hey, we ain't gonna cut the tape. No, baby, we roll hit the, with hit the, it. Hit the like button for letting us roll with it. Exactly. I mean, that's what we like to do. Yeah, gotta have a little bit of fun with it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I may even put the, this timestamp down in the description so people know to click. Watch this mistake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jake on the mixer. On the mixer. <laughs> I didn't even have to do no effects or nothing. Exactly. All right. Well, hey, we appreciate you all. Make sure you uh, you follow us on Twitter, yeah, Facebook, man. you know, Instachat. All this All stuff. those, oh, whatever. We're out there. Yeah. Gmail. Uh, MySpace? Yeah, MySpace ain't on that no more. I don't think so. We need to look that up. I used to have one. If anybody's on MySpace, <laughs> comment below. <laughs> Just let us know that's still out there. Right. Uh, but no, we appreciate y'all. Make sure you hit that like button. Uh, comment below. We'll answer your questions. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Peace.